I have uh, just two questions for you. Maybe I can just throw it out there as one, which is uh, tell us what we should know about your great, great grandfather, Edmund Pettus, and what we should know about John Lewis when we consider the name of this bridge. You know, I only ever wanted to use Edmund Pettus's name to shine a light on what I hope this country can look like moving forward. So what I would say is, what you need to know about Edmund Pettus is that he committed heinous acts, crimes against humanity before the war and after the war. Um, and you know his titles, you know the things that he represented, you know the things that he held up. And so to me, this moment is about finding a way to rename that bridge after the man who put that bridge on the right side of history by being willing to risk his life, risk his body and blood marching across it for that most precious and important of American rights, the right to vote, the right to enfranchise all Americans. So to me, I think the biggest picture, Lawrence, is to acknowledge the fact that renaming the bridge is a start. And actually, my concern is that it just becomes a ceremonial gesture because when you have people that are dragging their feet finally do the right thing, I think they get pleased with themselves sometimes, but renaming the bridge is the beginning of the journey towards affecting the change that John Lewis marched for. It's not the end of the journey. Because I think about two years before he marched in 1963, when Dr. King got up in front of that massive crowd in Washington and he said that America had defaulted on her promissory note where her black citizens were concerned. And then John Lewis got up on that same podium in front of that same crowd and he said, we do not want our freedom gradually. We want our freedom now. We are tired of being beaten by the police. We are tired of watching our people thrown into jail over and over again. And I think about that and I think about how two years later, John Lewis is getting his skull cracked across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And America had defaulted on its promissory note for two more years after Dr. King made that speech, after John Lewis made his speech. And now here we sit 55 years after they marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge and John and the Voting Rights Act is languishing. It is, the act itself is disenfranchised of some of its efficacy. I think what we do is we rename the bridge and then we get to work. We get to work, you know, fix, uh, restoring the Voting Rights Act and honoring John Lewis by using that unique power of American citizenship, that unique joy of American citizenship, of our right to vote, to get this country back on the right track in November. Uh, there is a movement in Washington now in, in the Congress to rename that bill, the, 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 the pending version of the Voting Rights Act, as the John Lewis uh, Voting Rights Act, which uh, could be uh, ultimately the more important monument if that could be enshrined in law again. It would be the more important monument. Absolutely, it would be. It would be um, a real triumph, I think. It would be a real way to make sure that his legacy, his legacy of getting into good trouble, necessary trouble, had paid off more in full. Caroline, I have to ask you, do you know uh, any of the white descendants of Edmund Pettus, any of those members of your family uh, that, that live uh, on the other side of the color line? I think no is a strong word. I've actually been warmly reached out to by some, and that is an uplifting and complicated an exciting new chapter in this American narrative, the way that we're shaping it up right now. So, you know, I think that that is a welcome bridge. You know, my article might have been a little bit of good and necessary trouble to build a necessary positive bridge into the future, I hope. <laughs>